What is going on, gentlemen? I hope you guys are doing fantastic, and I hope you're ready for another day. And I hope you're ready for today's episode where we talk peptides, optimal men's health, and gains weight. All the good stuff that a guy needs to know about to stay healthy and avoid erectile difficulties, because you don't want that. And luckily, I had Dr. Tracy Gappin on, on the show to talk about all these good things and how men can really optimize their health to live their best lives possible. However, I'm going to make a couple announcements first. Number one, um, we are now putting more things on YouTube. However, that is a slow process because the editing takes forever. But I am doing my best to get as many uh, videos up there as requested. Um, also going for more shorts. You know, I'm going to have raw full episodes up there as well. And, you know, so just bear with me because that whole process, man, I tell you, it takes a long time. And summertime is pure craziness if you got kids. <laughs> The other thing I do want to mention as well is that I will be taking all my personal training online. So I'm going to have about five spaces in the near future. So look up for that. I'll probably be launching that at the end of August. And I know I should have had it pre-summer. However, you know what? A lot of people need to get in shape any time of the year. So be on the lookout for that. I will be announcing that as well when I'm going to do the hard launch in regards to that. And also be sure to follow us on TikTok. We started that as well. So make sure you check us out there. It's going to be Mask and Health Solutions because it's always Mask and Health Solutions. And that's what we're all about. Also, more good things coming as far as episodes go. I've got a lot of recordings that i got to get to and work on. So be on the lookout for that. But let's talk about today's guest. Today's guest is Dr. Tracy Gappin. He is a board certified um, urologist by the American Board of Urology and is a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. He's a leading gains weight provider. Dr. Gappin founded the Sarasota Prostate Care in 2014 to provide an MRI targeted fusion biopsy and HIFU for prostate cancer patients. In 2017, Dr. Gappin founded Smart Men's Health, focused on optimizing male performance. He offers a personalized path to help men maximize sexual health, testosterone levels, and prostate health. He is also the author of Male 2.0, Cracking the Code to Limitless Health and Vitality. Also, be sure to stick around until the end of the episode where he gives out a special, you know, special promotion only for Mass and Health Solutions listeners. So guys, be sure to listen right till the end and you'll see what he's got in store for you guys. With that being said, if you do want to follow him, be sure to check his socials in the description and on that note, let's jump on into today's episode with Dr. Tracy Gappin. It doesn't matter if you're a skilled veteran in PE or you're just getting started. You're going to need some for your lubrication needs. And the best thing on the market is none other than Jelk to Grow. That's right. Jelk to Grow is the only thing that is made specifically for us PEers. So you don't got to mess around with that oily mess that sometimes, well, you know, if you're brand new and you're just getting started, you got no other alternatives. Sometimes we go down that road, but we don't have to anymore. We can go down the best road possible when it comes to using the right tools for PE. And that would include none other than Jelk to Grow's Balm doesn't make a mess it helps you heal it helps you moisturize and i mean i'm probably gonna go through about 20 of these tins <laughs> this year so make sure you get yourself one too i swear by it because i use it baby and make sure you get yours too check it out at jeltogrow.com click the link in the description below What is going on, gentlemen? Welcome to another episode here at the Mask and Health Solutions Podcast, where I am joined by Dr. Tracy Gappin. Dr. Tracy, how are you today, sir? I'm great. Thanks so much. Glad to be here with you. Well, today, I mean, one of the biggest topics of, well, the main topic of this podcast is men's health. And it's one of your specialties. And it's one of those things that I see, it, it just seems like it's declining faster and faster than, you know, it ever has in the past. And one of the things that kind of shocked me is that you brought it up as well, where infertility and test levels are just plummeting. Can you tell us more about why that is or any hypothesis you have as to uh, you know, for your sure. thoughts? <laughs> yeah, so I talk a lot about what I, what I have coined the testosterone pandemic. 
And what I mean by that is we have several large studies, one here in the US and two in Europe, Sweden and Finland, that all show the same very concerning fact. And that is that hormone levels are declining worldwide, declining to the point that free testosterone, which we know is the most important bioavailable part of testosterone, is down 45% over the last 20 years. 45%, it's crazy if you think about that. So, yeah. you know, we know that as you get older, your levels decline, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a 50 year old guy today has a free testosterone that's about 45% less than a 50 year old guy 20 years ago. And that's crazy. And that, that just doesn't affect sex, doesn't affect building muscle. It affects your metabolism, your energy, your bone health your cardiovascular health, you know, low testosterone is associated with about a 30% increased risk of cardiovascular events and early mortality. So we're talking about a man's life here. So this is a big deal. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that I've kind of looked into where I'm, I'm looking into the environmental factors and you've alluded to this too, about like the BPA, the phthalates, the xenoestrogens that yep. we're finding all over the place. What is it? What is one thing that maybe a guy can do to just eliminate you know, as far as practices or daily habits kind of go, like what's yeah. the one thing he could kind of do to just eliminate that would probably ease up on his test loss. <laughs> yeah. So, so you bring up a great point and, and that really highlights, you know, if we look at what is the biggest cause of this problem, that, that's the next question, obviously. And the answer is that yes, crummy diet, <laughs> micronutrient deficiencies, um, high stress, obesity, but without a question, we know that, Toxins in our environment called endocrine disruptors yeah. are crushing hormones, crushing testosterone in men. Uh, it's causing uh, obesity, it's causing infertility, it's causing autoimmune disease, causing cancers, causing all kinds of other health problems as well. But it's specifically very clearly tied to testosterone levels. And so what can we do about it? Well, when I work with men, we take a, a very complex approach, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Yeah. But one big part of that is eliminating exposure to those, those chemicals and those toxins in our environment. And so that sets the groundwork for what do you do? Well, one of the biggest things is plastics in our food, plastics with our water. So for example, you won't find me anywhere without a stainless steel water bottle. Um, my water is filtered. Um, now, why do I do that? Well, plastic water bottles are made of BPA, bisphenol A, and phthalates both of which, these two plastics, both of which um, have been shown to crush testosterone. Um, our water supply is loaded with a bunch of chemicals, including female birth control, estradiol, which turns off the light switch for producing testosterone or can bind to the receptor, the androgen receptor, so testosterone doesn't even work if you do have it. And so it's really important that you filter your water and that you avoid plastic water bottles to begin with. Um, using um, uh, Pyrex glass containers for your food to store food in, especially if you're going to heat it up in the microwave, you always want to use non-plastic for that. Um, a big hidden one is K-cups. You know, I'm a coffee addict, but oh, yeah, K-cups yeah. are made of plastic in general. And so you want to be care careful about those. There are compostable ones that are not made of plastic, but anytime plastic, especially when it gets heated, Mm -hmm. and comes in contact with liquid, it's going to leach into the liquid. And so that's a big, big one right there is, is avoid the plastics, um, eating organic grass fed, you know, um, clean fruits and vegetables that are uh, free of toxins, um, animals that are, are grass fed organic meats, mm -hmm. uh, wild caught fish for sure, all that's important. And then personal care products, our laundry detergent, our soaps, our shampoos, our deodorants, all of those, you need to be scanning the barcode. There are a couple of great, great uh, apps out there. You can do this for free. Uh, the Environmental Working Group has a great app called Healthy Living. It's a little green uh, and white E is what the app looks like. It's free to download it on your phone and go to the store and literally scan barcodes and it'll show you all the ingredients. You'll be surprised all of the toxins that you're putting on your body or in your body on a daily basis. And so that's just the tip of the iceberg right there, ways that you can minimize exposure to these toxins that we know are crushing testosterone. Man, I mean, what you're saying makes perfect sense, but at the same time, it's like, sometimes I'll tell my wife, it's like, I don't know, we should just live in a bubble because it just seems like everything out there is trying to kill us. Yeah. You know, I recently watched a, a, a keynote speaker, um, I think it was Dr. Michael, I can't remember his last name, but he was basically came out 
And he was talking about how the clothes you wear are killing you. And he's like, basically the polyester and how it kind of rubs off on your body. You start absorbing these microplastics. So it almost just seems like, you know, we're hooped from every angle. And the best we can really do is just kind of minimize it, right? And uh, right now, that's kind of what I'm trying to do for my family, for the men around us. But like you were alluding to before, you have a specific plan that you kind of go to when it comes to dealing with all these issues. Yeah. What would you recommend or how would you go about, you know, these lifestyle factors that are obviously contributing to the low testosterone? How do you combat this or how do you work around it? And how do you get guys to implement new habits? Yeah, you know, it starts with living with intention. So what I mean by that is, you know, you 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 bring up a good point that it's hard, it's tough. It, it you know we're living in this sea of endocrine disruption, if you will. It's everywhere. It's, it's like a soup of endocrine disruptors. And so, how do we combat that? Well, it it requires that we take a very intentional approach and what I call a systems approach to men's health. And this is something that not, not a lot of people talk about, but you know, think of our, our human operating system as having an incredibly high number of inputs. And these inputs are things like the plastics that we talked about, the foods that we're eating. Yeah. Um, an input can be our gut health, you know, the bacteria in our gut, which men don't seem to really pay much attention to, but they drive our metabolism, they drive our mood, they drive our immune function. And so understanding the, the, the microbiome, which is the bacteria in your gut, is so critical. Understanding how stress is affecting every aspect of your physiology, your body's function is so important. You know, we all have busy lives. You know, we're, we're got to say, I'm just so stressed. I have so much stress going on. Well, it's understanding how do you become resilient to that stress because high cortisol, high stress over the long term, what does it do? It causes inflammation. Mm-hmm. It causes oxidative stress. It crushes testosterone. It raises blood sugars. It causes insulin resistance. It promotes obesity. It promotes bad habits and it has a cascading effect. So understanding how to mitigate stress. Other inputs are things like what you eat, when you eat, how you eat, food, and what order of foods do you eat? That's important. How do you move? What do your genetics say is right for you in terms of activity? How do you optimize your detoxification systems? You know, we talked about the toxins coming in. Well, what can your body do to improve the way it responds to these toxins and eliminates toxins? Even things like how we breathe, how we sleep, how we think, all these things that get overlooked, these are all critical inputs into our human system. And when I work with guys as part of my N1 Performance Health Program, that's what we do. We dive deep into every one of those little things because the little things are big things. Yeah, well, there's no nuance that I think is irrelevant when it comes to having an optimal body. I mean, where I kind of came from, it was always the bodybuilding perspective. So I was always, you know, I just want to be in the best shape possible. But then you start realizing, you're like, well, if I don't sleep enough, I won't be in great shape. And if I'm yeah. stressed out, I can't put on muscle. Like, you know, what's going on yeah. here? And then if my body fat is too low, I can't get an erection, <laughs> you know? And it's kind of funny because all these things are, are all part of the same body, but we just kind of overlook it. Like, oh, that's just a different department. But yeah. now more and more doctors and more and more people are waking up to the fact that, hey, all of this stuff is connected. <laughs> you know, allopathic exactly. medicine was just always trying to like, make it all a different department, but it was never like that. And it's interesting that you were saying, uh, the one thing that I want to kind of pick your brain about was what to eat first. Can you elaborate a little bit more about what you mean by that and meal timing and how that plays in? Yeah. So I I work with a lot of high performing executives, entrepreneurs, business owners, professionals. I have uh, athletes, I have a race car driver, I have a professional baseball player. Um, And What's what's interesting is that every single one of these guys is different. Every one of them responds to different types of nutrition. And so for all of the guys working with me, at some point or another, we will use continuous glucose monitoring or CGM to understand how foods are affecting your body. And so I'll give you an example. For me, I can eat a baked potato and it doesn't affect my blood sugar nearly at all. I can have a glass of red wine, actually, and it doesn't really affect me at all. White rice crushes me crushes me oatmeal seal cut organic oatmeal which is a great source of complex carbs which you might think is good yeah. in certain situations it crushes my blood sugar other carbs don't using cgm using data 
to drive decisions is so important. And so when I work with men, we use wearable technology. We gather data, find blind spots that are holding you back, such as what foods are affecting you. It also matters the order of the foods that you eat. So for example, you can eat quinoa. Quinoa, you think, oh, that's, that's actually a good food. It can spike your blood sugar in many cases, but if you eat it with chicken, it won't spike it as much. But if you eat vegetables or, or fiber first and then eat the chicken and then eat the quinoa, your blood sugar hardly moves at all. And so the order of the foods that you eat, you know, for example, uh, you could have a, a chicken and potatoes and um, asparagus, for example, is what sounds like a great meal. But the order of those foods that you eat is so important because if you eat the carbs first, those carbs are going to spike your blood sugar before the protein or the fiber have a chance to have an effect. So it's really important. Think about eating the fiber first, the vegetables first, the chicken next, the, the protein next, whatever protein it may be. And your carbs are dessert. Carbs come at the end. Very, very important. And, and, and when you use CGM, continuous glucose monitoring, you'll be able to see how that's impacting you. It's pretty cool stuff. Oh, that's honestly, it's mind blowing to me because I remember I came across a fact that basically said you should never eat carbs as a standalone, right? And then it started talking about comfort foods and how comfort foods are just basically a combination of fat and carbs. <laughs> and he's like, and this is why obesity is flying <laughs> right, that's you know, right. right through the roof. That's and right. and, and yeah. it's, it's so interesting, though, the fact that you brought up the vegetable side of thing. Mm -hmm. um, what, was that just cruciferous vegetables or vegetables of any kind? In general, any vegetables, but especially the cruciferous ones, especially the ones that are higher in fiber, you want to eat those first. Uh, you know, another great example is, is an apple. You know, you could have an organic apple, which will actually make your blood sugar spike a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you mix it, if you put some, some uh, almond butter on it with it, you have negligible effect on your blood sugar. Little, little hacks like that are so important. And so it's understanding how to individualize it for each man that, you know, these, these micro decisions you make every day add up. And so this is what we do is we help guys understand what, what's right for your body and, um, and it's unique to you. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I tell people because I do personal training and I'm like, Hey, everybody's trying to look for a cookie cutter program. And I'm like, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. I got one program that may work for this guy, but that guy's 300 pounds and he's powerless. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not going to be the same macro. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be a totally different setup. And yeah. when you look at the, the different things involved in an in, in individualized program, you can see the differences. And I mean, for me, that was, that's pretty mind blowing. That's something I got to definitely, you know, I'm going to make a sound bite out of that, right? There. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Yeah. Definitely. I'll give you another example, you know, food sense you know, I talk a lot about the, the gut and how your microbiome affects everything. Another big part of that is food sensitivities. And uh, what I do with most of my clients is we will do a food sensitivity test fairly early on to understand what may be promoting inflammation. Great example is I have um, a client who, the race car driver I mentioned, who he will um, hold notice that his brain isn't quite working like it should. He, he told me when he first came to see me that at times, like he just couldn't focus, couldn't concentrate. It was affecting his decision-making on the, on the race course, which is a big deal. It can make the difference between first and last. So one of the many tests that we did to find hidden blind spots for him was food sensitivity testing. And what we found was that he had massive inflammation with coffee and bananas. Okay, coffee and bananas. Now, guess what he had for breakfast every day? He loves coffee and bananas. You know, there you go. Yeah. And so when he made that small change, it was massive. It dramatically affected everything. And so this is an example of how, you know, hidden blind spots holding you back. You think, oh, you know, banana is not bad for you. It's a little bit of high sugar. I get it. But in general, not that terrible. Coffee is not that terrible. But for him specifically, when you, when you dive into the data, you find that that's his kryptonite. Wow. I mean... How does one go about figuring this stuff out? Obviously, it's better to work with you in this situation because, uh, man, I, I, yeah. good luck. <laughs> that's what I say for most guys and the guys that you mentioned specifically, entrepreneurs, race car drivers, anybody that's got a busy schedule. Yeah. And it's better to just work with a professional when it comes to this regard because it's like you, there's yeah. just too many minor details for anybody to keep up, man. It, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, and most guys have this tendency to fall into the testosterone trap. You know, hey, I just need some, give me some tea, but what's my tea number? Where am I? What's normal? What's ideal? How much should I take? And you know, all that kind of stuff. 
testosterone is important, but that's just one piece of a much bigger picture. And mm -hmm. so that's why I like to talk about going beyond testosterone and really dive deep in all these uh, other very key parts of our health that, that are, are having a, a dramatic impact. Yeah, I mean, another question I had for you now, I guess we're going to go in that direction. It was peptides that you mentioned before in another video. Yeah, now you're talking my language. Yeah, I want you to elaborate more on what peptides are, because I always thought it was like a pro hormone testosterone. I always thought it was kind of with like the dirty side yeah. of bodybuilding, but I yeah, honestly sure. have no idea. And then when you started breaking it down, I was like, wait a minute, I'm lost. Sure. <laughs> so, so a peptide is nothing more than a short protein. All right. So think of a protein as it's a long chain of amino acids. You know, you take BCAAs, branched chain amino acids, um, you know, pre-workout. Um, well, a peptide is a very specific sequence of amino acids connected together to make a, a short uh, sequence that can have very precise outcomes. Now, these are, uh, think of them as proteins, think of them as enzymes um, that have very um, unique functions that um, your body already recognizes. These signaling molecules um, are already familiar to the body because they came from the body. So for example, insulin is a peptide. Growth hormone is a peptide. We can look at one that comes from the thymus gland, which is amazing for immune function. We can come look at one that comes from the stomach that's great for reducing gut inflammation. Uh, we can look at a peptide that specifically helps reduce musculoskeletal uh, injury and inflammation and helps promote musculoskeletal repair. Um, we can look at peptides that are great for um, reducing inflammation systemically. So you, you can understand how peptides are an amazing way to take a very precision-based approach, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, I have a lot of guys who have issues with um, anxiety or sleep. Um, there are peptides that are specifically designed to address those particular issues. The key is they're not pharmaceuticals. So they're not going to be patented. So drug companies don't own them. It's basically um, if you're able to sequence those amino acids and make it and synthesize it, then you can create this, this peptide. So um, big pharma can't get their hands on. Can't touch peptides. it. That's right. Exactly. Okay, and that's why okay. they hate it. That's yeah, why they hate say. it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So now the key with peptides is you want to be sure you're getting them from a reputable source. Yeah. So there are a number of, of direct-to-consumer companies that are out there. Um, when I work with my clients, I always uh, order them directly from a compounding pharmacy that I know I can trust and rely on. And, you know, they have very tight quality assurance and you, you get a certificate of authenticity and you know you're, you're truly putting in your body what you think you're putting in. Um, a lot of these direct-to-consumer companies, I really uh, have concern about the purity and whether you're getting what you should be getting. And um, so, that, that, you know, I always recommend any guy who wants a peptide to, to work with someone who does peptide therapy for that reason. Gotcha. Yeah. And I guess you go through all the rigorous testing to kind of know where somebody's like, okay, you're having issues with sleep or you're having issues with fat loss or weight oh, loss. Yeah. The diagnostics is the fun part. That's where, that's where I, I love to really dive deep, whether it's looking at um, uh, complex organic acid testing, micronutrient testing, microbiome, complex hormone testing, inf markers of inflammation, um, you know, looking at cardiovascular risk. I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the t traditional, you know, LDL, HDL, cholesterol, triglycerides, that's actually worthless. It actually doesn't really help us at all. <laughs> If you want to look at LDL particle count, for example. You want to look at apolipoprotein B, for example, LP little a. These are key markers of cardiovascular risk that most doctors don't even know about, let alone test. And so this is what I mean by really diving deep. And, and once you get all this data, whether it's from testing, whether it's from wearable technology, like you know a, a, a sleep device or activity or continuous glucose monitor, that's where the magic happens. And that's where you come in with the individual program and the plan to basically have it all sorted out. Because there you go, man. There I mean, go. the way you just mentioned it, I, I, like I can already see it. A lot of guys can be like peptides. All right, cool. I'm going. Give me the, give me the good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go on Amazon and see where I can get peptides.com or whatever the case may be. Yeah, but obviously oh. there's a science behind it, right? There is, and and I like to emphasize that peptides are like the icing on your cake. Okay. If your cake hasn't been baked properly yet, you can't put the icing on. Mm -hmm. And so um, peptides are not the shortcut. They are used as an adjunct, as an additional tool. Once we've fixed your hormones, once we've reduced inflammation, once we've optimized micronutrients and cleaned your gut, 
all that key stuff that we got to do, then you can put peptides on top. But until then, it's a little premature. And, and some guys don't get the results that they want. And, um, and they say, all oh, these peptides don't work. Well, that's why. Well, you know, the way I see it too, it's, it's the same. It's in the same vein as when I see a young guy comes to the gym. He's never worked out before. He's got all these supplements. He's got his brand chain amino acids, his pre-workout creatine pro. And I'm just like, all right, why do you need that? How much can you squat, bro? <laughs> you know, how much can you bench? It's like, well, don't worry about that. I got my supplements on deck. And it's like, well, you know, they're probably not going to do a whole lot. Maybe you should focus on working out, figuring the basics out, build that foundation. Then you can put that icing on the cake later. But there you go. you're 100% yeah. right. And, and the approach makes perfect sense. The other question I had now leading, um, I guess, kind of staying in the same, um, I guess, same hemisphere is uh, anti-aging. How, how do you go about achieving that? And one thing you mentioned that really stuck out to me, too, was anti-aging is kind of like a disease that we can start to, you know, keep at bay. How do we go about doing these things? Just, hey, man, open Pandora's yeah. box on this one. <laughs> I love this. I love it. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of science coming out uh, lately that's showing that aging is, in fact, a disease that can actually be not actually be not only slowed, but actually reversed. And I know that sounds crazy. A lot of your listeners are going to say, I BS, I don't, this guy's wacko. Um, but there's the, the, the data is there, the science is there, and it's evolving and exploding on a daily basis. Um, I have a great book that um, is right behind me, actually, that I would highly recommend um, called Lifespan by David Sinclair, a Harvard professor. Um, this is really a great introduction to anyone who's wanted to, to, to really start to understand some of the science. But what we understand is that there are nine very distinct, clear tenets of aging. Mm -hmm. And when we understand how to impact and affect those tenets, that's when things start to really become interesting. And so when we start to um, look at, um, at protein folding, when we look at epigenetic changes, when we look at telomeres, when we look at all the different things that, that are associated with, with aging, that's where we can start to really have an effect. And so um, the, the word anti-aging used to get a very bad rap and you know, it had a negative connotation and even shit myself. When I was, I was in urology for 23 years and most of that time I was like, that, that was nonsense. You know, this yeah. <laughs> Western medicine is the real stuff. And now I, I see the light. I realize that there's, there's real science there. Everything is, is, um, is science based. And it, it comes to really understanding um, at, at a very um, granular cellular level, what's going on. How do we improve mitochondrial function? How do we reduce inflammation? How do we reduce oxidative stress? How do we impact epigenetic changes that are happening from the environment? And that's where uh, it, it gets complex and it gets individualized in some sense. Uh, but there's a lot of fun stuff. You look at things like, you know, NMN um, and, and, and like nicotinamide riboside. These are um, salvage pathway precursors to produce NAD. Mm -hmm. NAD is a molecule. When I went to medical school, it was just another molecule in the electron transport chain, which is how our, our cells, our mitochondria specifically make energy, make ATP. Yeah. NAD was just another molecule. Who cares? Well, shit, now we know that it may actually be the foundation of life and that and that we age because nad levels decline and so that opens a, a pandora's box of well how do we optimize nad how do we improve our levels how do we yeah. increase it when it declines what's the best way is it oral is it iv all the and so there's a lot of nuance and a lot of questions and, and ongoing study about how to do that so it's it's fun exciting field well, yeah, in the first time I heard about anti anti aging was, oh man, I'm gonna say it was about six years ago, where somebody was talking about telomere length. I'm like, I don't know what a telomere is, and I don't understand why it's got to be long. And he's like, Well, you may be shortening, doing this, that, and the other. I'm like, What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. And all these factors kind of played into, it. and the other one too that kind of opened my eyes was the epigenetic side of things, mm -hmm. where it's like, Wait a minute, it's not junk DNA. Like, there's more to it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly right. Yes, the telomeres are like the like the caps at the end of your shoelaces, you know, think of it like that. And, and as you age, those telomeres will get shorter and shorter. And so they believe for a while that that was the source of aging. Oh, all we got to do is activate telomerase, which is the enzyme that will lengthen our telomeres so that they, it protects all the DNA in between. Mm -hmm. Well, then we realized several years ago that that's actually not really affecting longevity. And that maybe it's not the telomere shortening that's the problem. Maybe it's what's causing the telomere shortening itself that's the problem. And so now we're looking upstream to understand what's causing the telomere shortening and how do we impact that. 
And so that's where things are, are evolving. And it's, it's every week there's new amazing science coming out. And that's why you need someone who's staying on top of it because there's a lot of science there. Well, and it's something, something you mentioned right there that I think gets overlooked in Western medicine a lot is, hey, let's look at what's actually causing this issue. And that's the one thing that I've kind of like, my, I'm, man, I'm not a doctor at all. I don't know anything about anything. However, you know, in my research, what I found is like, we don't necessarily treat the root cause or look for what's the root issue. It's almost like we're looking more to not cure more, let's just keep you healthy kind of thing. You know, it's, it's not necessarily that we're looking to cure, we're looking to treat, right? And yeah. what you said, it's more like, let's actually look at the base. Let's look at what's actually causing this issue to start, you know, mm -hmm. right from the get go. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, you know, when I was in traditional, when I was in urology, I was in a very busy urology practice. And um, when I started having my own health challenges and I went to my local concierge doc here in town, um, that really a pivotal moment in my, in my life was when I found that, that um, he couldn't really do much for me because just like you said, I didn't have an illness. I didn't have a specific disease. I didn't have a diagnosis code. Mm -hmm. I was just not healthy. Yeah. And I needed to burn fat. I need to uh, increase energy. I need to fix my hormones. Um, and all he had for me was, yeah, you should exercise more and, and eat healthy and eat more vegetables and you'll be fine. You know, <laughs> like, dude, like I need a lot more than that. And so that's what got me down a rabbit hole of epigenetics and longevity and functional medicine and hormones and peptides and all this other fun stuff that is really transforming how we approach men's health. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm trying to really change the way we address men's health and be a lot yeah. more proactive about it. Yeah. No, because, I mean, a lot of people overlook men just in general in society, I kind of find. I've, I've been talking to other guys about the same issues, like suicide. I don't know, men's suicide was like, it's astronomical too. I think it's like every day, 2,000 guys commit suicide. And, um, you know, I had the pleasure of interviewing Ian Hill. Who, he's going to play Division One football to kind of just raise awareness on the subject. It's pretty cool when he's like 57. <laughs> but he was talking about these issues. And I talked to another dude who also said the same thing, like, hey, I was going to commit suicide or, you know, I had to go through these struggles or, you know what, my life is just way too stressful. And people just overlook the fact, well, you're a dude, figure it out, right? Yeah. And that's kind of where people like yourself are really making a change because men's issues really do matter. But usually what happens is like, until there's a dysfunction, or, you know, your dick doesn't get hard anymore. It's almost like, well, I should probably go see the doctor after I have a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're exactly right. Men often seek help way too late. And I see a ton of men with depression and you fix their hormones, you fix the micronutrients, you clear the inflammation and they're a new man. It's like yeah. they don't need the prescription drugs that they've been given for years that aren't working anymore. Um, and so it, it, it's taking a very different approach to that I think is really needed. And for um, sexual performance, can, are there certain peptides that kind of just work in that department, I guess? Yeah, yeah, there you go. So uh, there are a couple, uh, specifically PT-141, uh, which is bromelanotide, um, and melanotan-2. Those are two peptides that um, are derivatives of the um, alpha-MSH receptor, okay. which is actually a melanocyte receptor. So what that means is when you take these peptides, it can actually cause dramatic tanning with sun exposure, which is kind of like, we're talking dramatic tanning because it has such um, a close relationship with the melanocyte uh, um, hormone receptor. And, but, but what's fun about these two peptides is that they will increase arousal even in women and they will improve sexual function. Now, I want to be clear, if a guy's having e you know, erectile dysfunction issues, it's not going to fix ED. That, that's that's a, 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 oh, another know. story. But it, uh, for improving performance, giving you an extra edge, that's where those peptides can really make a difference. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And then, uh, well, I guess if somebody is suffering from ED, he probably has to go back to that whole base. And that's where he's got to talk to you about other issues, whether it be stress, whether it be you know, drinking too many water bottles and that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, all of that, you know, when we look at, at the systems approach to health, that's all going to impact sexual function. You know, nitric oxide is critically important for an erection to occur. So mm -hmm. anything that's affecting nitric oxide is going to affect erections, insulin resistance, cortisol, inflammation, stuff like that can all affect um, erectile function. Um, but when, when we look at how can we, in addition to that systemic approach, how can we fix this? How can we fix the underlying problem associated with ED? 
rather than just simply treat it with a Band-Aid like the blue pill or the yellow pill or, you know, a vacuum pump or whatever. Um, that's where we start to look at really great technology like low intensity shockwave therapy, uh, sure. which, is, which includes treatments like Gainswave. So low intensity shockwave therapy is a, a technology that uh, when I was in urology for 20 plus years, we use it all the time to treat kidney stones. Yeah. It's a very effective way of, of busting up kidney stones um, in a very non-invasive way where you're, you're delivering it from the outside to focus it into the yeah. kidney. Well, they found that that technology, that same treatment actually causes a process called angiogenesis, which is creation of new blood vessels, new blood flow. And so that's how it evolved to be used for uh, sexual function. And so gained wave is a great regenerative solution to help repair, rebuild, remodel the, the normal, healthy blood supply to the penis. Excellent. And that's um, one thing that I looked on your website too, or I think it was in the email was that you also use Gaines Wave technology along with other protocols, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so a lot of guys will come to see me from other clinics and they've had Gaines Wave and maybe it didn't work as well as they wanted it to. And number one, you have to really look at the whole body uh, and take everything into account and be sure that you're, you're uh, affecting you know, every system that can be involved. But also you, could, you can add things like PRP, platelet-rich plasma. You could add exosomes, other additional regenerative solutions that often work in tandem with Gaines Wave. And when you come at this from different angles, that's when I find the most success. If you try just one single thing, it's yeah. very often not going to give you the results. It's coming out from different angles, different modes of action. And that's where I find the, the most success. So it's almost like the holistic approach of, hey, you know, mind, body, soul, make sure you're good everywhere, make sure there's no stress. And then it's all right, let's implement these new uh, techniques to kind of get you up there. Do you also there use uh, pumping as well with the guys that are suffering from ED? Yeah, so <laughs> a, a vacuum device or, you know, penis pump, uh, vacuum erection device. Is a, is a really a great tool for guys to use if they're going through gains wave, if they had exosomes, PRP, um, or even if they, they've um, finished those treatments long term, I, I recommend that guys use that at least every couple of days because it's really like exercise. You know, just like you're exercising every other muscle in your body, the penis is in fact a muscle. Yeah. And so all that smooth muscle needs to be used. And I, I like to say, use it or lose it, guys. <laughs> and so every day, you know, keeping it active, as, as you get older, you need to stimulate it more and more to, to maintain healthy function. A hundred percent. Because, I mean, even for myself, because I got into like male enhancement a couple of years ago, and I thought, you know, same as a lot of people. I'm like, well, it's probably bullshit, but whatever, I'll give it a shot. And, you know, I got suckered into buying these $500 pills, but it came with an extender. And I was like, you know what, well, I'll use it. The thing actually works. I was like, wait a minute, hold the phone. You know, I thought this is all, you know, hocus pocus, but yeah. it actually helped to, you know, it actually worked. And then I found it that. Does. Yeah. So I started to combine that. And now I, I even use a pump and I just find that, yeah, when I go to sleep, I use it. Nocturnal wood is, is yeah. better. Everything kind of works out a little bit better. And that's it, right. It's one of those things that we should talk about more because a lot of men are just like, hey, you know what? I'm not using it. I'm losing it every day. And I'm scared to talk about it. <laughs> That's right. Exactly right. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things that, that guys tend to be squeamish or shy about it. They don't want to seek attention until things are really bad. And then they're very uncomfortable. But listen, guys, this is a normal, healthy part of any relationship. You know, sexual function is something that um, that should be a priority. And, um, you know, it, we talk freely about it in the office. We use the word penis, vagina, I mean, you know, all that stuff. It's just it's just normal stuff, normal, healthy. So, um, you know, key parts of a relationship. So I, I don't, I don't want guys to feel uncomfortable that they can't seek help when they need it. Oh, especially, I mean, I, I, I talked to Dr. Justin Brandeis, who's also a urologist and he's like, well, we just got to get over it. He's like, everybody's got a dick. Everybody's got a vagina. It is what it is. There, exactly. There you go. That's right. <laughs> and, and he's been using the P shot as well. And he, he was bringing up a lot of the same, um, same things. Right. And, and it's almost like we just got to get over the taboo because you want your whole That's body, right. you know, if, if a part of your body isn't working, you make it taboo then nobody wants to go near it. But obviously, if you are looking at that part of the body, you are taking care of it. It just makes the rest of your life so much better. There you and, go. You know, I, I think it's just one of those things that we should bring to the forefront, which is something that you're definitely doing. Tell us more about the programs that you do specifically for guys who may have ED and other issues. 
Yeah. So one of the, the programs that we find the most success with is our flagship program called N1 Performance Health. And N1 stands for N of one medicine or N equals one. And mm -hmm. uh, for those who are not familiar with it, you know, when you look at studies, they always say N equals a thousand or N equals 500,000. And that's really the number of, of, uh, of men or, or women involved in that study. N1 means that everyone is uniquely different and we need to do individualized testing to understand whether it's your genetic, we do a lot of work with genetics to understand what's right for your body. A lot of complex testing we've talked about, um, implementing wearable technology and then providing medical management of hormones, peptides, prescription medications you may need. What testing do you need to have done throughout at what intervals? And then the biggest part, which I like to humbly admit is probably most important is the coaching. So I have functional medicine trained health coaches who are part of my team. And as part of the N1 program, they interact with my client on a weekly basis to provide the lifestyle guidance and accountability that these guys really need. So what I mean by that is we all know what to do. You're supposed to eat clean, fresh, organic foods and grass fed meats and, you know, fresh vegetables. And you're supposed to go to sleep and, and, you know, practice good sleep hygiene and make sure you're going to go to sleep. So you get at least seven, seven and a half hours and, and you're supposed to exercise. And, and what happens is guys like, yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. But you don't got it. No. And so the coaches are the ones that, that help keep your feet to the fire, help keep you accountable to yourself so that you can achieve those goals. Um, and, and that's why I find, <coughs> excuse me, that's why I find is really the magic. I can do all the medical work myself. I can prescribe the peptides, the fun stuff, the hormones, the supplements, all the cool stuff. But a lot of times it's that lifestyle component that guys will, will tend to say, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, but you, you need the ongoing support there. And so um, that's what I do is, um, is integrate all those pieces. Um, my coaches will also work with my clients to help them understand how to track their wearable devices, um, whether it's a ring, a strap, a, a watch, a, a CGM. Um, I'm agnostic. To, I don't care which device you use, as long as you use one that you're going to consistently use. Yeah. Um, but help my, my guys learn and understand how do you use the device? How do you interpret the data? And what do you actually do with that data once you understand it? And so um, putting all those pieces together to me is what's found much success. Well, and I guess that's where you can really figure out where they're lacking too. Right. And it's like, as long as he's wearing his device, adherence is kind of the biggest thing. Cause I find for myself too, with my clients, it's like, Hey man, you, why aren't you logging your food? <laughs> yes. like, I, I don't, I don't know what you're freaking eating, dude. Like he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah. how many calories did you have last week? So like, we don't know. So we got to do it again, but mm -hmm. you're right. That's where the coaching side of it comes in. I honestly feel like yeah. that's the most important because that's where adherence actually comes into play. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we studies have shown that we tend to drastically underestimate the calories that we're taking in. <laughs> yeah. Unless you're tracking it, you have no idea. You're just guessing. And again, I don't like to guess. I don't like blind spots. I like to really know. And so gathering that data is so key. So, you know, you bring up a good point calories, you know, obviously, as you know, as a trainer, it's the macronutrients, which are so important. And yeah. genetics help us understand that, you know, for based on your genetics, there are a lot of guys who actually will burn fat better yeah. with a higher complex carb intake which is you're like like no no it's only keto is the only answer well no actually your genetics under help us understand what's right for you and so as as part of working with us that's what we do is, is help you really dive deep to know what's right for you especially for those high performance guys where i could imagine it's like yo i need to yeah. know exactly what i should be eating before a game or Absolutely. before i gotta perform yeah. That's right. Plus, you know, I'm nothing but jealous of those guys anyways, because I mean, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> there you go. Exactly right. Not put out any fat, but Dr. Tracy, I had an, an absolute blast, man. And I just want to just give you the floor and any closing words, anything you want to say to the guys out there. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. I'd like to offer a gift if you're okay with that to your listeners. 100%, yes. Cool. Cool. So it, um, if the listeners want to text the word health to 26786, again, that's the word health to 26786. I'm going to give a couple gifts. Uh, number one, I'm going to share with you my 10 secrets to high performance health, um, a quick cheat sheet of 10 tips that you can implement starting today. Um, I'm also going to share with you um, a, a digital copy of my, my best selling book, Mail 2.0, that was published a few years ago. Uh, again, a, a complimentary digital copy of that. Nice. And you'll also get a link if you want to book a complimentary discovery call with my team. So that we can um, understand your challenges, understand your goals, and see if we can help you, um, you'll get a link to book that call as well. So that's again text health to two six seven eight six. Nice, we'll do so, guys. Be sure text 
Everybody's got a phone. Nobody's got excuses. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. All right. With that being said, Dr. Tracy, I'll make sure I put all the links in the description as well. I had an absolute pleasure. And man, I got to pick your brain again in the near future. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks so much. Had a good time. Glad to be here with you. All right. Awesome. Until the next one, guys.